What's going on YouTube? JT is born here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about DC Universe Lazarus Planet Next Evolution Issue 1. This is a one shot and much like the other anthology titles within Lazarus Planet, they hardly have anything to do with Lazarus Planet and you could probably just skip them. There's really not much interesting in this particular issue. There's some great looking artwork and you know what? I will correct it. There is one story that has me intrigued and you can probably guess based on the cover who it's focused on. That is the Flatline storyline. The first thing is about a group of characters known as the Vigil who are basically stealing stuff. Red Hood's there and that's about it. Nothing to tell us anything really about them or their powers so much or I mean a, a little bits of their powers but nothing all that interesting or really gets me excited for them. Uh, there's a flatline storyline where it's her, her powers are acting up there may be some continuity errors in there but it has an intriguing ending and like I said flatline's the only new character of this group that I'm invested in because she was in the Robin book otherwise I probably wouldn't care so much uh, after that there is one focused on a character known as Deadeye who is Amanda Waller's uh, like nephew or something and uh, I guess he's been working with Waller the whole time or something like that that's that's kind of that one and then we, last we have the Red Canary one. Uh, with Red Canary, uh, that character was hyped up to do so much in Dark Crisis and did pretty much nothing. You could have omitted the character entirely from that storyline and you wouldn't have missed anything. And here it's just her on a random Monday. What does this have to do with Lazarus Planet? Uh, it, it's not furthering the story really in any capacity. The only one I think really has the most connection, of course, is the Flatline one, but this Vigil one, See No Evil with Red Hood in that, uh, who was this written by? Was it Ram V, I think? It doesn't have really anything to do with Lazarus Planet. It's just, it's it's such a nothing story in connection with it. There's no, there's not even some Lazarus rain all that much going on. It's just stuff. Like, what? It, why is, why do we need these tied into this event? You could have just made this some random anthology DC book. You didn't have to call it Lazarus Planet. Uh, when you're reading Lazarus Planet, the only ones I feel like you really need to read is Lazarus Planet Alpha so far and the Monkey Prince stuff. Um, I think Lazarus Planet Omega is coming up too, but th these other spinoff ones, you don't need to read at all. They're just a waste of time and money. Um, the only ones really in really tied to that event is Monkey Prince, like in terms of the spinoffs. Like these other spinoffs here, they don't really tie in much to it. They don't add up much. It's just filler stories with the rain, Lazarus rain affecting things. Um, and then they even say to be continued, but you don't know when it's going to be continued because there's no indication of what storyline it's supposed to continue in. Like where, like what? Just tell me. Uh, so the second storyline is the flatline focused one. I guess now she's referring to herself as Damien's girlfriend, even though she said, don't call me your girlfriend. Let's take things slow. But I, I guess it's whatever. Uh, she's hearing voices and things. She comes across Ubu who didn't Ubu get killed off recently. I don't know, DC continuity is all over the place. Um, at least she's charismatic to lead the story. Uh, and then she hears voices, and she goes and finds this urn, and she opens the urn, and the big reveal is that Ra's al Ghul is kind of returning. Is he dead? Is he alive? Is this just the spirit or ghost of him? I don't exactly know. It's kind of up in the air all over the place. But like I said, uh, this one has me intrigued because Ra's al Ghul we saw blown to bits, but somehow uh, they, they, they dustbustered his ashes into this urn, I guess, and it's the spirit of him talking. So this one at least has intrigue, and of course Ra's al Ghul is more tied to the Lazarus Planet event, if you will, because he's tied to the Lazarus Pits. And, of course, uh, Flatline having her connection with Damien and uh, a lot of references to Talia and all that. She's still trying to become uh, Talia's apprentice. That's what a lot of people, what, what she kind of wants to become at some point, because uh, she's a big fan of her. That's why she changed her fashion sense and all that. But the, her connection with Ra's al Ghul is the more interesting aspect to it all. So, that's at least has me intrigued. It doesn't. It says to be continued in some fashion, but we don't know exactly when. And also, this is the first time somebody other than Joshua Williamson is writing the character. So, and you know, capture the voice just fine. It, it feels really not too different from what Williamson was doing. But yes, so this one at least is kind of interesting. Still not all that tied much to Lazarus Planet as a whole with the whole Neza storyline and all that. I mean, there's there's Lazarus Rain and that going on, but that's that's really about it. <laughs> um, Afterwards, we have the storyline with Amanda Waller and her, I guess, nephew in that, like Deadeye. 
uh, stuff kind of happens. Not much really tied to Lazarus Planet, mind you, and it's just kind of forgettable. Uh, then we have the last storyline, which is Red Canary. Uh, we come to find her name is Sienna. She's still a Black Canary fangirl who's going to school, and stuff kind of happens uh, with the Lazarus Rain. She tries to stop a crime. Doesn't do much to further the story. These are just random events that are very, 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 very loosely tied to what's going on. And also with this whole Lazarus rainstorm, you'd think they cancel classes right now, but stuff's going on. She gets a hold of Sideways uh, for some help. Sideways is, you know, trying to stop Trigg. And also, why is she a college student? I feel like she'd fit more in line with a high school student, the way she dresses and acts and all that stuff and hanging out with Sideways. They should have just made her a high school student. I don't know why you made her, because she's hanging out with teenagers anyways like why not why is she a college student just make her a, a just an average teenager or something but then again we already have arrow fan members who are teenagers and they don't really get utilized so much so i, I don't even know like the, you got to do more to hook me on this character mind you other than her design and name because they really haven't done much of that she's just somebody who was a fangirl of black canary and just put red in front of the title and take some martial arts classes late at night. I don't know. You need to do a little bit more to make her interesting because they, so far they haven't really done much uh, between this and Dark Crisis. It just feels, I don't know, rather lackluster. Like, it lacks a punch. So, yeah, I, you can skip this issue. Uh, it doesn't really tie much into the Lazarus Planet thing. The only thing that's interesting is the Flatline one, mostly because it uh, sets up uh, Ra's al Ghul's sort of return or it has some sort of influence on here. At least with that, there feels like there is some sort of connection with the Lazarus Pits in that because, well, Ra's al Ghul, Lazarus... When you think of Lazarus Pits, who do you immediately think of what DC villain Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul or however you pronounce it because DC does it multiple different ways but yeah so there you go uh I see you can skip this one you can skip pretty much the other tie-ins uh this is better than the one we got last week I think mostly because the art was better in this one and there's at least one story i could was kind of interesting uh but the rest of it it just feels like uh well we want to showcase these characters and they're while they're not really tied into this event all that much we'll just say hey this is so and so and we're gonna do some stories with them no real intriguing setups other than the flatline one so yeah i don't know i'm like lazarus planet uh, it didn't need to be like all these tying issues you could have just skipped most of these and you're not missing much. Just just read Monkey Prince <laughs> and uh, the Lazarus Planet Alpha. That's that's all you need to know. But anyways, those are my quick thoughts on this particular issue. What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments section down below. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to each channel for more content, hit that bell for notifications. Next up, I'll be reviewing Monkey Prince number 11, and then some point later on today, I'll talk about uh, Chip Zdarsky's Batman issue. So, you know, that's probably the biggest issue uh, since it's a Batman thing, and I probably should just cover that one first, but I'm like, nah. I mean, I'm, I'm covering the this this whole tie-in event and the Zdarsky Batman thing there's some entertainment value in some instances but it's not really must read at the moment so yeah but uh yeah I want to talk about this one first and then I'll get to Monkey Prince and then we'll get to Batman later on today so there you go that's all I gotta say as always take care now bye bye then and I will see you all in the next video peace